Okay, so here we are inside the Screaming Frog module. Now, above right here inside this bar is where you're going to be entering inside your website that you want to scan. Of course, I've already entered in yourmadeinitaly.com as our example. You simply hit the start button and it's going to take, you know, uh, a certain amount of time. This took about four or five minutes. So I just decided to cut that out, run the test ahead of time. So here we are. It's completely done. Um, you're just going to walk away from your computer for about five minutes or maybe go do some other task on your computer and just come back to this in a few minutes and it'll be all done. There's nothing that you need to, you know, overview or watch. So as you can see here, I've completed 500 to 500. There's a little bit more inside of their website, but not too much. So you can see that uh, most websites, if you, you know, have less than a few hundred pages that you know of, um, you're probably not going to hit over that 500 limit, but this website does happen to have a lot of data inside of it and the way that it's coded, it's um, very base and HTML. So it refers to a lot of the elements multiple times. So that's why it has what seems like a lot of pages. Most websites and content management systems will reduce those duplicate contents and obviously make sure that it makes it the best that it can possibly be without creating those issues. So with this I'm going to go through step by step each of these tabs and explain what each one is kind of why it's important and then in the next lecture we'll go ahead and go into more of you know fixing all of these little things and just kind of going through what this should look like how we could optimize it how we fix it etc so bar a few different things that we're gonna keep out um, the main ones are going to really more or less be the link metrics. The main reason for the link metrics is, is that we don't have MOS, uh, Ahrefs, um, you know, uh, I'm sorry, SEO Majestic, and those types of link really uh, profilers, if I could call them that. They go out, scan your websites, scan your backlinks, scan everything that's coming into your website and then kind of go through and scan those websites and see what kind of authority they have from their databases. And with that, then they'll be able to determine what links are most popular, most powerful, most potent, and should be focused on the most. It's the basic end point of it. So we're not gonna be going over that too much inside of this because that's more of just learning how to use your own separate system, whether, again, you use Moz, whether you use SEO Majestic, there's different data points that you're gonna want inside of each system. I'm not gonna cover that here, because quite frankly, if you end up getting one of these, they're gonna have a plethora of training of this is what this metric is, this is why it means this, this is what you need to research, et cetera. So that's not really in part of your normal comprehensive SEO audit. That's something that's way, 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 way deeper. That's when you're actually going outside of that normal SEO audit realm and you're saying, I'm gonna go into link uh, audits and you know SEO, uh, is more of focused on towards on page what you can relevantly do within your own power backlinks are off page so they're a little bit outside your realm and again that's outside of more normal SEO audits so all right that being said I'm gonna go ahead and take my face off let me see I did that yep okay um, as you're gonna see over here where my face was is the internal um, backlink if we click over to a new tab it's gonna show external uh, and just different graphs for everything. But the main idea is it's just visualizing everything that you have so that way people can really understand it quickly and easily without being bogged down by say these types of statistics. You know, going through each address and figuring out, well, okay, that's great, glad you scanned all this. What in the heck does it mean? And that's what a lot of people need to figure out. So that's what this graph right here does for you. And again, you can see most of the websites just showing is HTML. Um, a lot of the other part of the website, as you'll see here, is other. So we uh, just simply scan down here. We can see out of all of it, 268 pages, 164 are HTML, and 104 are other, which means you know it's just a multitude of different combinations. Usually it ends up being a form of text uh, or tag and 301 redirects. So as you can see here, all these tags 301 redirect to a specific page and that's obviously a beneficial thing because if these tags aren't being used they don't have articles that go with them then that's exactly what needs to happen or if someone does click on these it needs to open up 
a delimiter, which basically gives you all the blog posts that have to do with niche marketing, all the blog to posts that have to do with temporary, uh, contemporary mosaics, all the blog posts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's all we're going through. So with that being done, I'm gonna go back into the uh, internal elements and we're gonna be able to see all of the internal elements that are available to us. That being said, that's going to be, once we click on all, 268 and this is where you're going to really be exporting things uh, especially when you do bulk exports again you're just uh, exporting different ideas whether it's the links different types of response codes any directives the anchor text images things like that and I'll show you how to download the reports um, in a little bit that's not really for this this is just going over the generics of these tabs. So the internal is everything that's internally yours. Externally is stuff that's on your website, either linking to it or it's hosted elsewhere. So this can also be known as a CDN or a content delivery network in which you're gonna have a host that will deliver your normal website data. But then for other people that are you know far away, like we talked about inside the speed, you know, I, if I'm in the US, I want to have my server test inside the US, not Sweden. But CDNs have all these servers all across the globe. So they'll serve it if they're not within that certain country that you're close to. And that helps speed up your website delivery. So as you can see, that's what Wix static images does. So any of these Wix static images are being served via content delivery networks. And they look just like this. They're not very sexy at all. Um, usually content delivery networks don't have optimization for these types of um, names for the images. That reason behind that is, is that um, only so many people can name at this static.wix static, you know, DNS server, their name, you know, chocolate.jpg. So if anyone else tries to do chocolate, it's just going to output, you know, an error. And that can lead to a lot, a lot, a lot of issues. So they just upload it like this and this is uh you're not going to have much control over your external that's like i've said internal is on page seo things within your control external is off page seo backlink building things that you don't own you can't own and if you have any say in it it's little it's not the hundred the full thing that you need in order to truly optimize these things you know if i wanted to optimize this i would name this whatever it was so if it was a gucci handbag i would name it gucci handbag.jpg but since it's external, it's out of my control, can't do it. So as we go through these internal and external have the same basic ideas. Um, when it comes to the internal, they obviously have the title, what the length is, um, even the pixel width, which just simply means the pixel width is what Google will allow for display within its network. Um, and the ultimate uh, pixel length, I believe, is somewhere around 660. Um, don't quote me on that because it's ever changing, I believe, too, with uh, the new retina displays that will be popping out in the next few years or decade. So, again, it's just really giving you a main baseline of, hey, you know, normally Google pops off at and you should just ask Google what it is at the current moment. What is Google's title pixel width maximum? Um, and then they'll let you know. And with that, you want to stay obviously in that because if you go into a second line, Google doesn't display second lines for your titles. Um, so if I were to search anything like that and it comes up again, I search the word anything, all of these titles that are going to come up here, only one line, one line, one line. That's about as long as it goes right there but that's only one line. It will not go into a second line. If it does, they'll end up truncating it, which just means they're gonna produce a dot, 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 that little ellipses. Um, so that is the title length and lets you know how far you can go when something's too long, over-optimized, et cetera. That just keeps you in check. Now we have here the meta description. Again, that is the subline. If we were to go in inside of here, you'll see this is the meta description, meta description, meta description, meta description. All those things are meta descriptions. And within the case of that, you're gonna usually try and keep within either 156 or 160, depends on the search engine. Um, we see here that when it's displaying inside of Google right now, it's 160. Again, always check with Google, 
or if you have an SEO plugin, they will do that for you. They'll let you know and they'll even preview your displays for you. And I'll go over that inside of one of the plugins I love to cover, which is called Yoast. And you can use Yoast whether you have WordPress or not. So again, it's universal what I'm teaching. Um, with that being said, it'll let you know what your length should be, whether it should be a specific number, whether they've increased or decreased that number, so on and so forth. Same thing with the pixel length. Pixel length usually stays within a certain parameter frame. And then you have your meta keywords. And your meta keywords are just simply put, your keywords that you have on the page, as we see, a lot of them are just bespoke luxury made in Italy, one of a kind. That's not really too great. We need to obviously work on that. Then you have your H1 tags, uh, I'm sorry, your meta keywords length. Your meta keywords length really doesn't have too much of a limit. Meta keywords aren't often used by too many search engines, um, namely Google, but Yahoo, Bing, Ask, all of those websites and search engines still use that. So it's still valuable. Your H1s are just kind of one uh, heading ones. And that simply means what is the kind of uh, enlargement of your text and your font so it stands out more and it's how people read when they scan read you know they're just gonna go through and go okay top five benefits for buying custom handmade leather uh, top five detriments you know five things to avoid and then they're gonna go oh five things to avoid that's what I wanted to read inside of this so th those are all your h1 tags and it goes on to h2 all the way down to basically h uh, sixes but your H1s and H2s are the most important. And then from there, it's just letting you know what your word count is, text ratios, number of links that you have, outlinks, unique outlinks. Again, there's a lot of data inside all of this. And what are the response times? Response times you should usually be under about a quarter of a second. If it's anything too much larger, that may be because of images. If so, give it some leniency. Otherwise, you want to try and make sure that you have a cache uh, plugin that is naturally reserving all of this data. Once someone revisits it again, it, it takes you know usually a tenth of the time or a quarter of the time. So if there's any redirect uh, interfaces, what type it is, 301, 302s, etc. If we go down here, we'll see that there's HTTP redirects from these tags. Um, I'm going to go all the way back over. You see, this is a tag. It's 301 moved permanently, as you can see right there. We're gonna come back over a little bit more. And there we see where it's redirecting to. There we see the what type of redirect it is. Again, what kind of encoded URL address it's going to. And that's about it for the internal. So Again, a lot, a lot, a lot of data that can be seen inside of a simple report poll like this. You can see that there's a lot of information and when you know how what to do with each of these things as I'll be showing you, you'll understand how this basically gives you your blueprint. You just fill in the blanks and then you pay someone to do it or you do it yourself and you just copy and paste that into the actual website. So uh, we're going into the external now, not nearly as much as the internal because the internal you have a lot more power, a lot more things you can correct and fix. External, not so much. So it's really just showing you where these things are, what type of content it is, and if it's actually showing up. 200 status code means it's live, it's valid, it's just redirecting. Um, if it's 301 or 302, there may be an issue. You need to check into that. As we see from all of this, doesn't look like we have any issues with that. So again, the status is okay. Okay, 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 everything's okay. So the crawl depth, just lets you know how long does it take to get to these types of uh, materials or things. We see the longest one is probably about a four. Again, that's how I really like to build my, my websites and my clients' websites. And you'll see most of those things are images and that's why. So it's usually homepage, blog, click into the blog post, click into the image, and there you have that. So it, that's, it, that's, that's the four click thing. But when it comes to getting to a specific page to buy, three or less is what you're aiming for most times. So there we have all that. Now we're gonna move into protocol. And all the protocol simply means is all of these different types of web pages, both internal and external now, all combined into one. So we have all 495. What types of codes are they giving? What are they giving for codes? And if that has any effect on the actual outcome of someone getting to a page. So with 301s, they're moved permanently. 
do they redirect and that's all you're really looking for and usually that's an internal so you'll see if they redirect over on this tab but other than that again we're just looking for do they have any issues in, oops my apologies does the protocol have any issues in terms of no index is there a reason that they don't want this to be indexed if so why um, so if we come over here we look at the one thing that's no index contemporary mosaic it's because it's a tag so that's reasonable people don't want that indexed but of course probably more than not we're still gonna want to index everything because Google is going to naturally validate what serves as valuable content and what doesn't and when you have a tag you can actually rank for keywords with just your tag because it's including four or five links to blog posts on that page and it's just kind of going to show like hey um, you know this is a little mini repository of articles about contemporary mosaics so we want to probably remove that no index but um, again we'll end up doing that a little bit later uh, in the next lecture response codes same exact thing and again you're getting all of these graphics over here so for the layman they can understand all this is simply going is here's your 30 3xx directs which is 301 302 or 307 they all basically mean the same thing but one's either permanent or one's either temporary and the other one's basically what's called dynamic but dynamic just simply means temporary um, so inside of here we have two xx successes which just means it, we were able to reach it usually that's a 200 and then over here we have no response no response is obviously an issue that we should look into so if we come over here these are all the 404s uh, the 404s obviously are probably going to be more or less files that of course are not used so what we simply need to do is clean up these files or at the very least um, find out where these addresses are and create redirects 301s for them so that they redirect just simply to the home page and again that this can save some uh, good SEO that's being lost throughout the website so you can see there's not much that needs to be done but I'll also show you how to enter these uh, turn 404s into 301s so this is obviously we have a few issues those 404s right there so inside the URI again it's really just different ways to focus on more um, unique ideas inside this tab the internal and it's more or less breaking it down so you know exactly what to focus on that's really all this is so when I went through the internal and the external I basically gave you the overview of everything that's going on but there's still a little bit that you can dive inside and again you can extract uh, different reports whether you just want to report on the page titles or the meta description or whether you want to import uh, report on everything internal so it's kind of cool and the best way I like to do it is when people pay me more I like to download each tab by itself because it gives a graphic with it and it it seems like a lot more uh, work was done not really when you want to have a quick easy report someone pays me 10 15 25 bucks maybe anything under 50 I give them just an, inter an entire internal and external export and that's it and that's good enough and they'll have everything they need to know to optimize their website so again URIs are getting in they're just finding out your status codes and the address that you're encoding to so as we see over here this is a data item it's just re-encoding itself back to make sure that hey uh, this URL that you have here is it going to the right URL and that's correct it is so all of our internal features are just basically saying are they going to the right place if they're not again here we have our 404s again so whether you're over here in your response codes whether you're in your URI it's showing the same data basically just in different ways it's fo focusing on a more uh, specific portion of the much larger report so I hope that makes sense to you page titles exact same thing that we just went over again you have your titles here but it's just the titles right see that can't go over anymore this little bar at the bottom as I drag this that's all there is so say I were to uh, reduce this a little bit more there you go you can see there's nothing over there meta description again just focusing on the meta description meta keywords again just focusing on the meta keywords again there's a lot that can be fixed inside of this we see 
um, that it's using the same meta keywords over and over again. It really shouldn't be. H1s, again, what else is going on inside? H2s, and again, that's what uh, Screaming SEO Frog, uh, Screaming Frog SEO Spider is going to focus on, just H1 and H2. But mind you, that this goes all the way to H6. While each H1 is uh, the most important, H2 being the second most, third, third most, etc., so on and so forth, you should really focus on all of them when possible. But since Screaming Frog knows you have a lot of pages, a lot to focus on, and it goes inside of everything, it focuses on, again, the 90%, the most important. H1s and H2s make up 80% of, in terms of H, uh, H tag SEO. So that's really what you need to focus on. And then the other percentage is H3, H4, H5, H6. And most people don't even get to an H4. Most use an H1, an H2, and an H3, and they're done. So that's basically, you know, 95% of all SEO in terms of H tag SEO. So when we get to images, again, a lot of these we see are external, so there's not much we can do for this. That's an unfortunate thing, but when you have a Wix website that is, um, you know, hosting your content, your images as a CDN, that's just something you can't handle. Directives, again, this is just letting people know, do they have any, you know, relative next, uh, relative navigation, all that is, is just giving rel links. And rel SEO isn't too important, it just lets you know what's going on, why it's going on, where it's redirecting to, etc. So when we get to the href language, again, it's just looking into what are all of these uh, website, I'm sorry, all of these pages using in terms of uh, HTTP headers and encodings. Are they 301 redirecting? If they're 200s, they're not gonna show up with anything. Ajax just brings in, again, something that has without a hash fragment and with, with a hash fragment, that's all it's really focusing on here. Um, and just lets you know, here's what the ugly URL looks like. Custom is just whatever you've made already as a filter. You can add different filters. Um, I'll go inside more of that in a little bit. The analytics, again, just pulling out mainly the most basic data that you need, which is the URL and the title. And if it's a 200, 301, or a 404. And then once you get in your search console, if you hook this up with Google Analytics, you can pull out a lot more information from this, mainly going to have visit times, traffic, what types of um, keywords are input, are they direct link searches, are they you know, specific keywords that Google has seen before. And a little secret I want you guys to know is that um, direct searches that come from Google aren't usually like direct searches like they entered in yourmadeinitaly.com. It's that they entered in something so unique they'd never seen this keyword before. So rather than display a thousand or sometimes a million keywords for websites that have never been seen before, they're just going to say it was a direct input search. And that just simply means it's a very unique search term that was uh, input into their search engine. They've never seen it before. That's 70% of all searches, in fact. Every day, people are finding new ways to say the same thing, and that's a quite amazing thing to hear. Uh, but when they have those direct search traffic numbers inside your Google Analytics, that's just simply explaining this is a brand new term. Never seen it before, but you were found in the search engines. It was for something that you probably shouldn't even focus on because we've only seen this term search term once and that was today and it, it came and it went to your website so it's really cool stuff just to really think about that and know that people aren't just typing in yoursite.com they're actually typing in unique search phrases and you're being found so with link metrics like i said we're not going to really cover this because depending on what you have whether it be ahrefs um moz or seo majestic they're going to teach you how to use that and all of that data is going to be then imported into here in regards to your backlinks and your site structure and profile so that's about it those are all of the tabs explained the general overview um, again you can have things like the site structure you can have response times all of these different things and graphs will be input into your uh, 
your uh, exports when you do reports. So again, all of this is really here for you to be able to view, but uh, most of it, again, if you're going through internal, it's gonna be found inside of here. And most of the unique in links are going to the home page and you know, contact us, terms and conditions, things like that. Let's you know the percentage of URIs, what was found, any APIs that you connect to. It lets you know if there's any errors that they found in terms of your site structure or backlinks or links that are coming in and they are no longer going to any specific page on your website. And that happens quite a bit. So that's why connecting one of these three right here is very important to your backlinks because you want to be able to 301 redirect those pages that no longer exist that you didn't even, they don't even sometimes show up here as 404s. But um, if anything inside of your own website references itself, and let me kind of show you what I mean by this, because <laughs> it's probably better to have a little bit of a visual reference to understand more of what I'm talking about here than uh, just your normal hmm, lesson. All right, so we're gonna imagine that we have your website right here. And I'm gonna have to probably catch this up a little bit. There we go. So you're gonna have your your website kind of in the middle and from here, you're going to have again, your normal pages, your uh, you know blog and your blog will have multiple other links as well that go out to different articles that you've written. And you got like a contact us and about and an FAQ. I already did this before, but uh, what you're going to do in terms of issues here, see Google Search Console, Google Analytics, and what Screaming Frog does is if there's any issues in terms of a link internally that's a 404, it'll identify that. But when it comes to SEO link juice, that's an external factor, a website you don't control, and it's coming in, and it's pointing to a structure that you didn't even know exists. Uh, we'll, we'll make this kind of a, a little blue. You didn't even know that this was an, this, an existent website. So now this becomes an issue or an error. That's what Majestic solves is these issues where these are deleted pages. These are ghost pages right here. The light blue as you see. And any websites that are linking in, maybe linking to a ghost page and because you don't have Majestic, Ahrefs, or Moz, you're not gonna find those issues specifically. And they're pretty simple, quick, easy fixes. They're just like the 404s that we're going to be fixing, and I'll be showing you inside the next lecture. Well, that's about it, I think. Uh, we've covered all of those tabs. We'll go into, again, more of what you can do with all of this up here, and also how to fix these reports as well.